Hello everybody, it's me, Andrew, and this is going to be a reveal, uh, walkthrough, show and tell, whatever you want to call it, of the Akashic Tarot by Sharon Ann Klingler and Sandra Ann Taylor. And as you can see, there's a glaring difference in this deck and any other deck. Oh, you might not have caught on to it yet. It is the 62 card deck in Guidebook. So I actually had a really interesting experience with this deck because I saw it on Amazon. I don't know when I saw it. I can't remember. Um, but I saw it a really long time ago and this title and this image really captivated me, right? So I clicked on it and then I saw that it was only a 62 card deck and I was like, well, what the hell? It's not really a tarot deck if it's only 66, I mean 62 cards. So I was like, well, I'm just not going to get it. Uh, I, I'm not, I, this, this is stupid, like blah, blah, blah. So I went for the longest time resisting it. Um, just because I was just, I was just not having it. And then Hay House um, released an app version of this deck where you got a seven day free trial. And I downloaded the app and had... A really good experience with the deck uh, regardless of the differences that it has and and then the the deck found its way into my collection um, which was very for fortuitous that it came um, to me so the Akashic Tarot um, so we're gonna talk about it a little bit more in this deck first I want to let you know um, there is a major arcana and minor arcana. The major arcana is 22 cards. The major arcana is missing cards 9 and 10 and then the page and ninth. So um, it's missing that those 16 cards, um, making it 62 instead of 78. So um, the first thing I want to say is, holy wow, like this box is gorgeous. It is such a, it has a matte finish, which is really different. Um, I don't think Hay House has made a matte finished box that I've seen yet. I love it. I love it so much. Um, the box is gorgeous too. And the inside, minus this little white speck, is a really nice green. And so this is the back, and this is the back of the box. So this says, the Akashic Tarot is an astoundingly accurate tool for predicting the future, unveiling hidden insights and unleashing new powers. <clears throat> oh my God, excuse me. This unique 62 card deck, very unique 62 card deck, can transport you to the Great Hall of Records to help you discover the unknown. It can also reveal ancient and new talents, unexpected victories, imminent rendezvous, unmet allies, and the steps to untold prosperity. Yes. The Akashic Tarot is designed to access the profound energy and unlimited information that make up the Akashic Records which are great fields of wisdom and power that transcend time and space and are immediately available to all. With each card you connect with a you can connect with a powerful akashic force and open up and open to the psychic currents that are always flowing between you and the akashic realm. This deck will help you connect with your spirit guides, ascended masters, angels and loved ones in spirit. With the turn of a card, you can enter the akashic world, which is freaking awesome. And that's, that's the only reason why I was even interested in trying to obtain this deck because it is so powerful. <laughs> like, this deck is legit. Like, look at this guidebook. Just, just for scale. Not in comparison, but just in scale. This is the Animal Tarot Cards guidebook. This is the Akasha Tarot guidebook. This is ridiculously huge. And I think they actually had to make the guidebook bigger because you have to kind of explain... Why the hell you cut out 16 cards <laughs> from the, from, from tarot. <laughs> but the guidebook is 221 pages, including the, um, the, the, about the author and how to contact them and, and such. Um, that's actually really cool. Oh, Sandra Ann Taylor has a radio show on Hay House on Monday. It's Monday when I'm filming this. Hmm. 
Okay. So let's see. We're gonna like we're not gonna read the whole guidebook because we could this video would be like forever long. Um <clears throat> So it basically just tells you kind of about the Akashic world, um, the definitions, Akasha, Akashic forces. In a, yeah. So Akashic force, each card has an Akashic force or exercise with it. This says it is the etheric energies and psychic powers that move through and catalyze all things, all thoughts and all actions through all time. Also the force will, the force and will of the higher mind and heart. The Akasha, literally the etheric, also divine mind, collective consciousness, and all that composes the etheric world, Akashic records, an expansive body of all information, knowledge, inspiration, discovery, and creativity for eternity. So, an opening to the Akashic records. Like I said, so about this card deck, how this deck is unique. So this says, many people assume that that the Rider Waite deck set, the standard for what many people consume, many people, oh my God. Wow, I cannot read. Many people assume that the Rider Waite deck set the standard for what a tarot deck should contain and even look like. This is curious as Arthur Edward Waite, working with artist Pamela Coleman Smith, created his tarot deck in 1910 and tarot decks have been around for hundreds of years. Waite did carry a number of ideas such as the suits from some older decks into his own. In medieval Europe, the suits found in Italian and Spanish cards were thought to represent the different castes of society. Swords for knights and nobility, clubs or staves for peasants, cups and chalices for clergy, and coins for tradesmen and commercial class. While weight was inspired and designed by some of the earlier decks from Central Europe, there are a great many other tarot decks that have very different suits and very different numbers of cards in different major arcana. The oldest existing deck of suited cards goes back to fourteen goes back to the fourteen twenties in Germany, and its suit signs were dogs, stags, ducks, and falcons. The oldest extant Swiss the oldest extant Swiss deck comes from fifteen thirty though, and there are literary references to it as far back as thirteen seventy seven. Its suits actually are some of our favorite shields, acorns, flowers, and bells. There are no elements of destructive weaponry here, no swords or clubs. Even the shields were not depicted as armor, but as heraldic crests and banners hanging from walls or carrier's flags. So in this deck, oh, so when we decided to do the Akashic Terror, we didn't just want to redo um, what is considered to be the traditional tarot. Instead, we were driven by years of work with the Akashic Records, as well as decades as well as the decades we have spent studying and researching cultures, philosophies, societies, histories, and spiritual practices that reach into ancient times as well as around the globe. So in this deck, you will find many differences to the major arcana. The number of cards and people. The reason for these are... The reasons for these, the reasons for these differences have their roots in numerology, theories of karma, druidic mysteries, quantum physics, natural law, religious symbolism, Buddhist traditions, and mythologies. And beliefs from all around the world. So, yeah. Um, and then she goes into speaking more about the, the differences. So, it's not um, paid, it's not um, pentacles, swords, wands, and cups. It is roses, scrolls, keys, and forces. So, roses um, is relationships, emotions, family, children's home, personal and inner conflicts. So, I mean, roses would probably be more... Um, Align with what the cups represent, though, like I said, this deck is very different. Like, just because it's the Five of Roses doesn't mean it's the Five of Cups. Um, the suit of scrolls is the world of the mind, communication, and study. So, scrolls would probably be the closest to the swords. The suit of forces is about energy, consciousness, and natural law. The suit of keys represents values, wealth, success, worth, abundance, career, authority, confidence, and achievement. And the power you can experience, express in your life. So this is very different. Um, and like I said, those um, those are going to be just, I mean, differences. Like I said, they're not, I said they're, com they're comparable to those suits, but <clears throat> the numbering and the meanings of the cards are totally different. Um, so how to prepare a question. That's really good. Tapping into the Akashic Forces. 
So this is about spreads. So she has a three card spread, a one card spread, three card pyramid. Um, and then she has the wheel of life spread. This app is $7.99, by the way. So if you, if you kind of want to work with this deck beforehand, um, I would highly recommend downloading the app for, for free for seven days. So meanings of the card, so major arcana, small representation of the card, the title, upright meaning. Um, she does give you a reverse meaning, which I think is kind of cool if you decide to do that. Um, I am going to be reading this as an oracle deck with just a major, with just a... I'm going to be reading it as an oracle deck with the exception of the major arcana cards, which I'm going to read as traditional major arcana cards, which are like bigger life events and more emphasis on these cards when lots of them show up. So Akashic Force, so like this one says, close your eyes and go within, feel your psychic energy growing, expanding upward from the very depths of your being. Now notice the first thing that you sense. So it has like little things like that. Um, and then the same for the... It's the same for every for every card. Um, I will say having a um, Akashic Force for each card is actually amazing. Um, not just the, the majors. So I like that a lot. The guidebook, once again, is the matte finish. So I actually really, um, I really like this. Um, yeah, like I said, as far as it being called a tarot deck, I'm not sure I'm going to use it as a tarot deck. Um, simply because I am so used to how tarot is and I, I don't know if I would feel right using it as a tarot deck um so for the time being it's going to be used as an oracle deck um but if it wants to present itself to be used as a main deck in a tarot reading I won't um I won't question it I will just do it so let's just take a moment and appreciate the backings of these cards the cards are a matte finish so you can see that let's see i have i have doing virtues crystal angels so you see these cards are glossy so when because i have a light that's over here over over, over there so over there so with the glossier card you kind of have to be careful but with these it just gets, it just shines a little bit and you're still able to see the whole card so i actually really um really love the matte finish and i wonder if that's something they're going to do with all Hay House decks um, going forward. That would actually be really interesting. Um, so I could, like this deck is not gilded. The Hay House does not gild their decks anymore. Um, but reversible. So if you want to read reversals, knock yourself out. I will say the backing of the cards is what really drew me. Like That's the first thing I saw in the app. And I was like, oh my god. These are absolutely gorgeous. So... I just, I love them so much. Um, and it's like we're already at 50, about 13 or so minutes. So just bear with me because I know you guys are going to be interested in, in this deck as well. Um, and I haven't really seen many reviews on this deck. Um, and I really hope that I'm not coming across as rude by saying that I'm not going to be using it as a tarot deck. But I'm just, I'm not. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous, I mean, I love the deck though, but I cannot use it as a tarot deck. But, and you'll see why. So... Oh, you've already seen mine, actually. So 62 cards, a little bit thinner, um, but it's still a really good size. Like all Hay House cards, they're gonna be a nice size um, in your hands. They're gonna, be they're gonna be pretty big. So with that, let's just take a look at the Major Arcana. So this is card number one, the Oracle of Delphi. I actually wanna put these back in the box as I, as I go, because I don't want them to get messed up. The Akashic Library. This is so pretty. Archangel Gabriel. Um, I will say I, I, I kind of see Gabriel as more feminine. Um, but in this particular card, it is a, it is a male with slightly effeminate features. Um, softer features, I guess we could say. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, this card, number four, Baith, or Birth. Um, the Akashic Force for this card is actually really beautiful. 
Hilarion. I'm actually really interested um, to work with this deck in the respect that there are a lot of Ascended Masters in this deck. So I'm actually really, really interested in doing that. And actually we'll draw a card later at the end of the video. So the Divine Physician, which I'm believing is probably Jesus. Or um, considered Christ Consciousness. I'm actually not going to put them in the box because that, that sound was annoying me. So card number seven, Fated Meeting. So I said these are the major Arcana cards. So... <clears throat> A major emphasis on these. Archangel Raphael. Raphael's looking a little sexy. Look at that smolder. That come hither. Don't mind if I do, sir. Archangel Michael. I actually love that there are children here. And I wonder if that's an indigo child. With the purple. Hmm. The light of the world. I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. But I will say this, the artwork in this deck is really pretty. And actually, um, she, um, Sandra Ann Taylor has a course about the Akashic Records. Which um, I actually have, I just haven't taken. No, <laughs> yes. Uh, the Buddha Prepares. This is actually probably one of my favorite cards. Um, simply because there's actually... Um, and if anyone here is like a an Asian history scholar, please don't like berate me because I'm just gonna tell you what I remember. Um, there's actually um, a Buddha who is said to be getting ready to come to Earth, whose name is Maitreya, I believe is how you pronounce it. And we actually there was um, an opening of the Asian um, Art and History Museum here in DC, and there was that we were on a tour and we we hijacked a tour actually we just kind of like what got and started walking but they were like he's um legend has it or the myth has it that he is preparing to come down to earth because every statue you see him with one foot like down on the ground getting ready to like come back and i'm like please come back <laughs> please the buddha prepares I always I see that card as like really preparing the energy within you and they're doing trash outside right now So if you hear a lot of like fucking rumbling, that's what it is The initiation and this count st. Germain. So I'm really interested in this card This card really intrigues me and if we get this card when we shuffle, I'm probably gonna die The muse but You guys see what I mean the art is gorgeous and the cards are gorgeous. All the cards are golden. And they have this around. The, they have this border. Um, I actually remember the borders being bigger in the app. Um, but that's probably just because it's the app. But it's really pretty. I really, really like this. Caught in the ruins. I wonder if this card is like the, um, the devil card. Where it seems like you're caught. But you're actually not. Because you can just walk around it. The lookout up in the air, reflection, will, wisdom, and mind, which is interesting. Uriel and the Sphinx. This was the first card I drew from that app. Add some. It's the last major arcana card. All right, so we have the One of Scrolls. So on track. Two worlds. Setting your course. See, to me, I would kind of see this as wands. But apparently the scrolls are the house that is about, let's see. The scrolls is the world of the mind, communication, and study. So I just see this as a three of wands. But see, it's that you cannot read this deck as a tarot reader. You cannot. You, I, I, if you really study this deck, then I guess you could. But I feel like it's a lot of work to 
keep studying one particular deck in the system that it uses in, instead of just using it as an Oracle card deck. That's how I felt about the um, the Dreams of Gaia Tarot, except that deck I just absolutely loathed. I hated that deck so much. I just, I don't even know why I bought it. Like I bought it and then sold it within a week. So this is the Eight of Scrolls, so Paths Unknown. So see, to me, this looks like the, um, either the Eight of Swords or the, um, the Eight of Cups. So it's really interesting with this particular deck. So this is the Queen of Scrolls. She's so freaking gorgeous. And she's the cover of the box in the guidebook. I just wish that like all the images were that big, but I guess there's no real reason to have like, there's no keywords down here. And the King of Scrolls. Thanks for hanging out with me guys. I know that this video might be a little bit long. One of Roses, but it's just so interesting because we don't have aces, we don't have nine or 10 cards. Winged Messengers, Loving Elementals. Yeah, this is definitely going to be a, a deck that I won't read as tarot um, for a long time, if ever. Um, but I will definitely, this is my card of the day for yesterday. Um, it was January 7th, I believe, or 6th, I can't remember. The Queen of Roses is, is the one card I'm not fond of the art on. King of Roses. One of forces. Two. But yeah, I am. Um, I really. I don't know. It, it's a really. It's a beautiful deck, and it's a powerful deck too. Like, don't let my snide little, <laughs> like this isn't tarot comments like dissuade you from getting this deck, because this deck is powerful. Like, I'm not even gonna lie about it. It really is. And I've actually been holding off on shuffling it and using it because I wanted to show it to all of you. Um, because I wanted to, I wanted you guys to see it. So you can kind of see there's no real cohesive theme. Um, it doesn't seem in the minor arcana. So there's no storytelling. It doesn't look like. Queen of Keys and the King of Keys. <clears throat> so that's it. That's the whole deck. Um, like I said, I I, I love I love this deck. I really really do. Um, I just I wish it had been called something other than Tarot um, because Tarot already. I get what they were trying to do. They were trying to say, oh, like we remade this based on like numerology and stuff and everything like that. However, I feel like tarot has become such a time-honored thing and a time-honored way, way of divination that I feel like this could have been just a really big oracle deck um, with, like, major cards and minor cards. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, the only issue I have with this deck is the name. That's the only issue I have because this deck is, like... Phenomenal, like phenomenal. So we're gonna draw a card. I'm gonna shuffle this, my new way of shuffling, which is this way, because apparently I like to break tarot decks with how I shuffle. And the new Hay House decks actually cannot handle the way I shuffle because I guess when they lost the gilding, they, um, I don't know if the card stock became more sensitive, I'm not sure. So we had the two of forces, the willow. So we'll zoom in on that. So two of forces, the willow, which is really pretty. So, ta-da, the guidebook. A big beautiful willow tree stands in the summer sun. This stately tree is strong and flexible. And this card upright is telling you that you are too. The willow spreads its roots deep and wide, creating a strong foundation that is capable of standing up to anything. Now is the time for you to stand tall and feel the support of the earth beneath your feet. 
This card indicates a time of calm, so enjoy the peaceful energy now. It also signifies a time of power, perfect for reinforcing your foundation in your work, in your family, in your spirit, and in the depth of your belief in yourself. Just like the willow, you have a peaceful strength drawn from the waters of your soul and extending through, through all eternity. Stand confidently in your truth and take actions that support your growth of all things wonderful, that support the growth of all things wonderful in your life. And know that you are powerful. And the Akashic Force for this card is take a deep breath and feel yourself plant energetic roots through the bottom of your feet, moving down to the very depths of the earth and tapping the resources you need. Notice the strength you feel rising up from this profound source of energy. So that was our card, which is gorgeous. And I just really want to thank you guys for hanging out with me. I know this was a longer video, but I felt like this particular deck called for it. So this was a walkthrough of the Akashic Tarot by Sharon Ann Klingler and Sandra Ann Taylor. If you are interested in Sandra's Akashic Tarot, I mean not Akashic, um, Akashic Records course, um, I'm going to put the link for that below. I'll also put the link for this um, in, in the description from Hay House, so I'll put that down here as well. So I hope that you guys loved it. Um, I really love this deck. Like I said, just if you get past the title, you can you know do, use it any way you want. I'm, I'm super excited for it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will be seeing you guys soon. Bye.